Okay, here on the left we have a popular and recently purchased 1.6 gigahertz Atom netbook alongside a Cortex A9 development board on the right configured as a dual core. Let's browse the web a bit to see how they compare in terms of responsiveness to the end user. They're both running the same operating system off the publicly available release repository, same browser, and they're connected to the same high-speed corporate network. Here we're looking at BBC News. We can see that the rendering performance is extremely competitive. And at Engadget, we have large graphics. Scrolling works well. Now, the netbook has a graphics accelerator, while the development board does not. Certainly, end products would have a graphics accelerator, so the netbook has an artificial advantage in this case. But the scrolling works extremely well. Back to Google, over to a super popular Web 2.0 site, Google Maps. Let's look around a little bit, see the graphics, the pictures, more pictures. Let's look at some larger pictures. And now we head back to my favorite home page. So performance is certainly a key part of the end user value proposition, but it's only step one. As form factors shrink, power efficiency and battery life will increasingly drive market success. And we should note that ARM processors have been attached to very small batteries for well over 10 years now. Now finally, while the Atom netbook is running at 1.6 gigahertz, the Cortex A9 development board on the right is running at just 500 megahertz. That's right, only 500 megahertz. You can imagine Cortex A9 end products at or beyond uh, gigahertz in the near future.